Hey, Jeff. Hey, Caitlin. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. I hear you have some ghost stories for me today. Oh, we have no shortage. So, and the sun's out, so I think we'll be all right. All right, let's, let's go. check them out. So, Jeff, tell us about our first ghost story here in Automobile Alley. Well, Automobile Alley is packed with history, and they like to say that spirits and residuals and ghosts, all these different types of entities, stick around due to the energy of the past. Yeah. And since we had so much energy with all the different dealerships and the repair shops and the mechanics, uh, apparently a lot of things have stuck around. So stories of phantoms uh, lingering in some of the buildings. I was talking to the award shop over here. They said that they had an employee who wouldn't work after sundown. It's not, I got to be home at seven for my kids or anything. It's like, once the sun is down, I'm gone because I don't yeah. want to see these people People walking around. My favorite story is here at Tin Lizzie's, which she was telling me about a customer who appeared and disappeared. Uh, she saw somebody walk in and uh, she was a little bit nervous. The lady was kind of bedraggled. She had long kind of stringy black hair and uh, you know not, not necessarily nervous but wanted to keep an eye on her and so forth and the lady walked over and turned the corner and went into the stationery. And uh, she was kind of, you know, listening for the door to open up and, um, and ring, but it never did. And then she remembered it didn't ring when this lady walked in. So she went to go check on her and turned the corner, nobody there. Wow. Yeah, and so she went back and checked the security footage on the cameras, and the door never opened for her to come in or go out. That's crazy. Yeah. If you think these stories are good, it's nothing compared to what we have downtown. Uh, let's head back over to the Automobile Alley stop, and then we'll uh, take the loop around. Actually, I've got a quicker way. Let's take the 8th Street shortcut past Vanessa House over to the law school stop. We'll get into downtown a lot quicker. Hey, shortcut. All right, that was quick. Uh, what do we do now? Well, first things first is we have to get our fare. And the easiest way to do that is downloading the Token Transit app. Mm -hmm. You've got all of your streetcar and bus fares right on your phone. You can also just purchase a single ride pass from the kiosk right here. Cool. And then, then what? Um, well, it looks like our ride's only a minute away. So we should probably go take a seat so they know to pick us up. Sounds good. So Jeff, where are we going next? We're going to get off at the Business District platform and then we're going to walk across park to the famous Skirvin Hotel. Perfect. So Jeff, what stories can you tell me about the Skirvin? Well, we have no shortage of spooky stories about the Skirvin. The most famous, I guess, is Effie, the one that keeps uh, messing with all the NBA players. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, some people say, well, that blames one or two games and psychological warfare. But like, <laughs> if you look at the sports pages, it is uh, the Lakers, the Bulls, the Knicks. Everybody has got an Effie story. A couple of my favorites, uh, guy talks about uh, sleeping in the middle of the night, waking up to his bathroom door slamming shut. And a little spooked, but he decides, okay, well, you know, it might just be a draft, an old building or something. Right. So he decides just to open up the bathroom door, so show himself everything's fine. And when he goes open, he finds the bathroom light on and the entire bathtub completely filled with water just to the point of spilling over. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, another guy had a story where he was laying in bed, uh, kind of watching TV, chilling out for the night. And at the foot of the bed, the mattress compresses, like somebody's sitting on it. And he thinks that's weird. And then even weirder, it starts scooting up like somebody's getting ready to cuddle. And so he takes off and reportedly stayed somewhere else. <laughs> so all kinds of strange things. The legend is that that was Mr. Skirvin's uh, girlfriend. So she was a chambermaid here at the hotel and he owned the hotel, things were carrying on, found out she was gonna have a baby. And uh, he said he couldn't be found out as an adult her. It's gonna ruin his station in Oklahoma City society. Uh, so he kind of kept her in a prison of luxury up on what used to be the top floor, that 10th floor there. First, she thought this was great, uh, you know, free room service. But after the baby came, he said, no, I'm gonna keep you here where I can keep an eye on you. And she did not like this. So different versions of the story say that she was trying to uh, swaddle up the baby and climb up onto the roof where she could get out through the back stairs. Other versions say uh, she just picked up the baby and so despondently stepped out of the window. Either way, uh, slipping or purposefully uh, falls those 10 stories and down to the concrete below. A uh, Couple problems with this. Uh, one is that uh, there's no newspaper records of this, uh, which you'd say, well, he's a rich and powerful man. He can keep him out of the of newspaper. Course, yeah. uh, but that was back when we had several different factions of newspapers, mm -hmm. and Mr. Gaylord would have loved to have put on the front cover of the Oklahoman that Mr. Skirvin's responsible for murder. Of course. Uh, <laughs> but but he, he didn't. Uh, another problem is the exact same story happened at Mineral Wells, Texas, at one of the hotels built there at the exact uh, same time. So it could be misconstrued. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is it's the seventh floor, and at one point the lady's chained to a radiator. Huh. So kind of up in the ante. Yeah. 
Uh, my big problem with it is uh, the story is always Mr. Skirvin can't be found as an adulterer, uh, but his wife had passed away in 1908, three years before the hotel even opened. Oh, wow. So by definition, he can't be an adulterer. He's a winner. Exactly. And he's rich enough he can marry whoever he wants. <laughs> uh, so my idea on where Effie could have come from goes back to the days of Prohibition. Uh, so if you wanted to get a drink down here in uh, downtown Oklahoma City, which they had lots of famous people coming and visiting, so a lot of people did, uh, they'd have these parties going on up on the 10th floor. Uh, which, being at the top of the building, whenever the police raided it, they'd have to run past the front desk and up the 10 flights of stairs, uh -huh. so the front desk would call up everybody on the 10th floor and say, oh, the police are on their way. If there's anything you don't want them to find, uh, just toss it out the window. Uh, and time and time again, it did that. So as they had these parties going on, uh, they would send out agents through Oklahoma City to pick up young ladies come party with these guys. and. Mm -hmm. I guess now they have NBA players to party with. So <laughs> that's my thoughts on Effie. Uh, but definitely not the only story through the hotel. Uh, reportedly, Mr. Skirvin himself. When they did the big renovations for the reopening in 2008, uh, they cut off all the electricity to the building, but the light bulb over Mr. Skirvin's chair there in the lobby where he always sat uh, wouldn't go out. And I talked to one of the contractors who said he physically went through and cut every single wire he could find, and it still wouldn't go out. Interesting. Yeah, uh, but they did power through, got everything renovated, and took Mr. Skirvin's chair out. Uh, but reportedly down in the basement, they have a big portrait of him and a chair underneath it, which they like to keep flush up against the wall so nobody trips under it, mm -hmm. uh, except sometimes it's scooted out like somebody's making himself comfortable, and there's cocktail glasses stacked up underneath. Interesting. So, which if it's your hotel, do what you want. Yeah, exactly. Certainly one of Oklahoma City's most famous uh, haunted locations. And very iconic. <laughs> well, where are we going next then? Uh, let's head to Bricktown and see what we got going on there. All right, let's go. Well, Jeff, we just got off at the Bricktown platform. What kind of spooky stories do you have for us here? Uh, we have tons of stories about Bricktown. It's uh, so much energy over the years that a lot of people are sticking to it. The most recent story I've heard is this one at Abuelos. So this entire block used to be the old uh, Oklahoma candy factory. So this is where you'd come in, they'd bring in sugar off the train, uh, process it as it went along. And now it's been broken up into different things, but apparently in the basement of Abuelos, they have a little girl huh. haunting. Uh, so I was talking to some of the folks there and they said that uh, ba basement's all used for storage and it's always kind of spooky going down there and sometimes it's ice cold. So and not like the air conditioning's bad, but there's just these little cold spots, which yeah. according to parapsychology, that's where ghosts are hanging out, kind of drawing heat away. Uh, so one of the waitresses was telling me that they went down and uh, her coworker said, oh, it's freezing down here. And, and she said, uh, the girl, little girl's here, we should probably take pictures. And, and they said, no, let's just gear up the stuff and get out of here. And so she persuaded her to stick around. They took some pictures and uh, finally they, they went back up. And when they were looking through the photos, one of the corners of the room, there's this uh, little girl wearing a white dress watching them. Mm. Yeah. And lots of groups down there have caught EVPs of little girls giggling. Wow, so, that's interesting. Yeah, which if you're gonna haunt some place, why not a candy factory? Yeah, exactly. But not the only story about the candy factory. Uh, two doors down, we could talk about the Bricktown Brewery's basement. Well, let's go hear about it. Mm -hmm. uh, this ending of the building was the big showroom where you'd come in and buy your whole barrels full of taffy. And because they were doing such big deals, uh, they kept all their money in a giant vault downstairs, bigger than you would call a safe. Probably 20 by 20, it's huge down there. And when I, we were interviewing Charles Stout, uh, the manager here, he talked about early opening in the 90s, uh, using the basement for storage, and uh, the vault was all locked up, which he didn't worry about, because it's none of his business. Uh, but one week he went down there and the vault door was standing open. Wow. Yeah, and he thought, oh, that's great. So next time he saw the owners, he said, hey, I saw you got your vault open. And they said, what are you talking about? And he said, the vault down in the basement. And they said, no, nobody's opened that in years. The old owners lost the combination and he's decided not to deal with it because that, that's not his business so uh went, ignored it and a couple weeks later it was locked up again and he said ever since it's been on about a two-week cycle it'll be open and closed open and closed and huh. and just somebody moving it which they like to say that it's a ghost that calls itself kid knoll so huh. when they opened up the second floor uh for the pool hall and things uh on that stairwell there appeared a sign that said kid knoll 1918 and at first they thought it was somebody with a sharpie playing a joke but it's actually made out of old style ink so if somebody's playing a joke, it's a very serious one. And there's all kinds of poltergeist activity happening throughout. Uh, stuff gets knocked off tables, uh, but most famously, he likes to mess with these brewers over here. Uh, they have tools that are specially made for the cauldrons, and sometimes they'll disappear two weeks at a time. And there's no reason anybody would borrow them because they're directly for that. The brewers will blame each other, but ultimately they just show back up. A couple weeks later, I guess Kid Knoll's done with them. Uh, and to celebrate that they have a ghost here, uh, they actually tried to name one of their brews after him, but it went bad, which they thought, you know, it happens, about a 2% chance. Uh, so they started up another one named Kid Knoll, and it also went bad. 
Wow. So they decided, okay, they, he doesn't want it. <laughs> Kid Noel's not a beer guy. No. What about across the street at the old spaghetti warehouse building? I've heard they got a lot going on over there. Oh yeah, I've heard tons and tons of stories. Well, let's go check it out. Sure. This building has all kinds of fun stories about it. Back when it was open, I talked to some of the waitresses and they said the upper stories were always used for storage. Huh. Uh, and when they went up there, you know, since it was just storage, it was all uh, kind of muggy, not very ven well ventilated. But the real nastiness of going up there was nothing was where, where you had left it before. So somebody up there was shuffling things around. Uh, and they said they would also run into these cold spots, which they were kind of tempted to hang out there, cool off a little bit. But then you get the sensation that somebody was standing next to you, even though you're the only one on the floor. Wow, it's yeah. a little creepy. Yeah, it's definitely something going on. Uh, one guy on a ghost tour a few years ago was talking about being a delivery man when it was still open. And uh, he would bring his truck in about 4.35 in the morning, and there would all be shadows in the back windows looking down at him. Mm. So he, he didn't go anywhere further than just the kitchen. Uh, and then the manager here was saying that they also had things down in the basement. Uh, she said that they would talk to you. And that's all she would tell me. She wouldn't tell me what to say, that's it. Well, I think I've heard enough about Bricktown. Let's hop back on the streetcar. Sure, on the way we can talk about the Chinese tunnels. All right, cool. So what was this you were saying about the Chinese underground? Emergency access. Well, the old uh, Myriad Gardens and Scissortail Park used to be the original Chinese district for Oklahoma City. Interesting. Yeah, so after the land run, we had a huge demand for labor, and the railroads were about wrapping up, so a lot of Chinese and Chinese Americans moved here to Oklahoma City. Uh, and as uh, one family member came in, he'd invite cousins and relatives and friends and move in, which uh, they kind of got boxed into a four-block area right there in what is now downtown Oklahoma City. And they built buildings as tall as they could, and then they built basements and sub-basements and sub-sub-basements and connected all of those in an extra living space that was called the Chinese Tunnels. Interesting. There's lots of legends about them. Uh, some say they went as far north as Northwest 5th or 15th. Uh, one guy said on Northwest 23rd, where they were big digging the foundation for the Gold Dome, that they found Chinese tunnels there. Uh, they said that down there they had an entire Buddhist temple with an eight-foot gold statue of Buddha. And there's a series of catacombs with people who had been born down there, grew up, and died without ever seeing the sun. Wow. So those are a lot of legends about it, which uh, some people even say the whole thing's legendary itself. But if you look back through the old newspaper archives, there's tons and tons of stories. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites talks in 1920 about the uh, Spanish flu coming through and a health inspector going to all the boarding houses. And so he went in, uh, everything checked out, was just fine. And as he was heading out, they saw the stairs going down to the basement and said, oh, I should check that out too. Which the homeowner said, oh, I don't Ball know if he'd be stop. comfortable Please going down there. Personal belongings. But the police officer who was escorting him thought they might be hiding something. So he drew his gun and demanded to be taken down. The homeowner said fine. And so they went down and the article describes this endless tunnel that just uh, kept on going. And on either side, there were these entrances to other tunnels, as well as to bunk rooms, sleeping 18 people, uh, kitchens, laundries, everything with running water and lit by gas light. And uh, all these people's heads started poking out, wondering who this guy is. And, and so the article says he declared everything clean and on. headed out to she catch his breath upstairs. Line. So, uh, and even though their driver had been sitting up there and never saw anybody cross the street, before they got to the next house, uh, the homeowner came out and said, oh, you're the health inspector. I've got everything in, ready for you. It should be an easy inspection. <laughs> so, uh, which as uh, Oklahoma City grew, everybody started moving out to the suburbs in, after World War II. Mm -hmm. And so all the jobs dried up, so people moved out too. A lot of vagrants kind of moved into the area and they decided uh, we're just gonna bulldoze the entire thing to this urban renewal called the pay plan, which mm -hmm. was to clear everything out and build new, mm -hmm. uh, which is where we got the Myriad Garden. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of city developers preferred to be out in Midwest City or up in Edmond and build right. there. So for a long time, uh, it was kind of empty downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, but still a lot of vivaciousness as things are coming up. And uh, during that renovation, when they were bulldozing, they dug up old Chinese tunnels. And there's a really good article from the Oklahoman describing a, uh, a team of workers uncovering this hand-carved stone staircase leading down to a big set of double wooden doors, the handles Next all lashed stop, with leather. Santa Fe Interesting. Yeah. Sponsored by Rural Sourcing. So when they opened it up, they saw this short uh, hallway leading on to this kind of uh, living area. On either side of the hallway, they had doorways that started four feet off the ground and then ran up to the ceiling. So you'd have to be walking upside down to make them work. Huh. Uh, and then in the big living area, they had all these uh, papers on the walls covered with numbers. And 
Uh, they brought in the newspaper trying to figure out, you know, is this some kind of wizard's lair or something? And of course, when the po photos were Arriving published, Santa Fe people who could read Chinese just said, well, you know, that says come gamble here, right? Uh, so which teller windows start four feet off the ground and run up to the ceiling, and uh, those are all the returns on your bets. If you see something so, suspicious, yeah. report it to our personnel. Yeah. Same thing you'll see at Rivington Park, just underground in downtown yeah, Oklahoma City, exactly. so kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, who knows, we might still have something down there. Yeah. But in the meantime, we do have some interesting stories about Myriad Gardens. So what stories about Myriad Gardens do you have? Well, there was a lady who was telling me that on her first day, Please hold on. her boss She's came in departing. and did all the onboarding you have to do. Uh-huh. Uh, and then our co-workers came in and said, okay, listen, stuff's going to move around your office by itself. Uh, don't worry about it. Those are just the ghosts. <laughs> so, and yeah, she said, sure enough, uh, like her pencil cup would turn itself over and the pencils would scatter in different directions. Sponsored by Riverwind uh, Casino. Or over by the bookshelf. A book would slide out and just fall to the floor without anybody nearby. Hmm. Uh, she said she never felt threatened or anything. Just was, there are other people here too. Just casual ghosts? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, Gardner was saying that uh, sometimes when he hadn't finished his work by the end of day, he'd come in the next morning and it'd be done for him. Arriving arena. That's convenient. Yeah, where do you get one of those gifts? <laughs> exactly. Well, we just finished riding along, learning about all kinds of Oklahoma City history, and here we are finishing up at Oklahoma City's future. Thanks for uh, sharing some ghost stories with me. Yeah, thanks for the ride on the streetcar. Uh, where can I find out some more information? Yeah, you can learn more at okcstreetcar.com, or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at OKC Streetcar. Awesome, will do. All right, have a good one. You too.